one of my first jobs was working as a projectionist at a, at a movie, movie theater? theater. Yeah, uh, in downtown Westerville, Ohio, State okay. Theater. And, uh, yeah, so I did the whole Did you have to join the union and all that? Because that was kind of a big deal back then, wasn't it? The the Uh, projectionist unions and all that stuff? Well, that's the point. We weren't (laughs) union. Oh, I got you. That's so they, why they, they could pay you, you know, five dollars a show <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> in, in 1968. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I was. Uh, uh, and you learn how to to run. It was fascinating back in those days because you had these two. You would have two machines going, and you would while one's uh, doing the uh, the show. Mm-hmm. Um, Showing the picture, the other one you set up so and, the next reel or whatever. Yeah, yeah. and there's a little um, like an arm that would drag on the on the reel, and when it would get down to a certain level, it would drop and okay. ding a bell. Okay, that was the clue to start getting things ready. So you lit up the arc lamp in the other one. Okay, and you got it all ready, and you watched. And there are two dots in the upper right hand corner towards the end of a reel. Okay, and when the first dot appears you start the second projector okay and when the uh when the second dot appears you flip the the shutters okay you drop the shutter on the second machine on the first machine and you open the shutter in a second and then and then to the audience it's a seamless transition of the movie you're switching over without any gap in the movie or anything so the movie um, Wizard of Oz, mm-hmm. which is black and white at the beginning, mm-hmm. that's the first reel. Okay. The The transition occurs when Dorothy walks out of the house in the land of Oz. And initially, it appears that it's black and white, but in fact, it's very muted color. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. In case you haven't noticed, that's Mayor Dennis Kentai Jr. Yep. <laughs> cool yeah now unfortunately all that's been replaced by computers oh i know i mean (laughs) even in my day we uh you could get to a 16 millimeter master reel that was you know like the the size of i don't know a car tire or something like that and it would be uh i think more modern theaters now don't even have film projectors no they don't it's all computer yeah digital and they they download the movies to the thing and everything else so It's a different world today than it is. And it I was mean, back really. then. But uh, interesting times. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, Mayor joining us this morning here, and uh, because last night was city council meeting, and uh, uh, and we said last night it was a full agenda, and yep. uh, it lived up to uh, its yep. advertisement there. Uh, you guys were there five hours yesterday yep. getting uh, this hammered out. But uh, but good news, I'm guessing, at least some stuff got done. And, and, oh, uh, <laughs> Little, yes. Some uh, there was a couple yeah. issues that probably took a while to hammer out, but but uh, nonetheless things got worked out. So. They did, and uh, we start off with our normal uh, pledge and invocation. We had a presentation from the city manager about this sounds really dull, but it was actually fascinating. It was called utility billing, okay. and we're in the process of preparing a guide for users. What is utility billing? That's your water bill, your sewer bill, and your uh, trash bill. And those all occur. Those all appear in a uh, mailed bill that yeah. you get every month. You probably call it your water bill. You call it your water bill because yeah. that's the first thing up there. Mm-hmm. So it was really a fascinating discussion. We're working out, uh, and this is what I love about this professional staff we have. We have recognized that customer service issues are prime, and how do we, in a rational, methodical, not methodical, but in a, a predictable manner. Mm-hmm. Uh, meet the needs of our customers. And so we've got a, we didn't have, we have different policies. We had some ordinances, sure. pull it all together into a guide. You needed a uniform. Right. That provides guidance to both staff and to the customer. So if you have this problem, how do you deal with it? Uh, it was a great presentation. Um, and we will be putting out that guide, uh, hopefully in the next uh, 30 to 60 days. Gotcha. Good deal. The, uh, Cause, yeah, cause, draft version. Because if you think about it, people generally don't contact you the the utility side of things unless there's a problem. Yeah. You know? Because so, you know, they're already going to be in a state of confusion. Things and then if like like if the procedures for everybody's right. muddy, then that's you know that's frustration for both parts here. So yeah, this is probably long overdue. <laughs> so we had a couple public hearings. <clears throat> One of them dealt with. Uh, Fixing our ordinance about signs, temporary signs in the right of way. Mm-hmm. We talked a little bit about this yesterday. This was an, a necessary cleanup where we make the uh, quote the law 
comply with reality instead of reality complying with the law. Gotcha. Um, the gist of it is this. The right-of-way includes that area between the sidewalk and the curb. That is technically uh, public property, mm -hmm. and we had prohibited signs in it. However, the reality is the city, the mean, the property owner right there is responsible for it. They mm -hmm. mow it and everything. Yeah, if, they, if that thing's out in Kemp, guess who gets called yeah. on it? So what we're saying is if you're the property owner, you own that house, you live in that house, you want to put a sign out front, whether it's a real estate sign, a church sign, support for a student athlete sign, or a political sign, yeah. go ahead. Or just say, hey, everybody, I live here. Yeah, <laughs> just say, hey, everybody, I live here. So that's basically it. Uh, little discussion, Councilors Sanchez and Orpesa voted against it. Not entirely sure why, don't know. Um, next up was a, a redo of our clean air ordinance and uh, encompassing the the new stuff on marijuana okay. and for the um, uh, uh, vaping, uh, more uh, basically that, and, and I would have to go back and read it all. Mm -hmm. That passed nine to one. Councillor Sanchez was opposed to it. Uh, Councillor Sanchez has um, historically not favored any of these uh, bills or sure. ordinances dealing with marijuana, and I get it. I know where he's coming from. Sure. We're just trying to make them oh. as uh, reasonable as possible. Uh, did you ever learn more? We were talking about this yesterday on the radio about the you know smoking marijuana in public. Thing. I you know I I didn't get into it last yesterday. Yeah, kind of got distracted with other stuff. Yeah, and I, I forgot all about that. So we'll have to. You know what we need to do? We need to have Kevin Mavers come in. Okay. Have Kevin come over and he can talk your ear off. About I that. mean, talk, <laughs> he can fill you with lots of useful information. <laughs> Can I say that with my outside voice? Oh, my golly. <laughs> Hopefully he's not listening. Anyway, no, Kevin's really a, a, a solid guy, and we really am uh, pleased to have him. We, he he ended up being the part of the show at the end. Let's go. Uh, after that, we got into things that had originally been on consent, but Counselor uh, Orpesa had pulled them off. Okay. The um, couple things here are going on. Uh, they're dealing with the Atkinson uh street project the, where Atkinson is being rebuilt from second to Cherry Street. Uh, that's the funding we got. And what it came out is that we're requesting funding in this next budget from the state to go all the way. This is a truck bypass. Gotcha. So the state has some responsibility, more than I care to talk about. <laughs> more than they're willing to admit. <laughs> more than they're willing to admit, yeah. So we looked at uh, some issues here. One was to authorize or um, repair and spend some money for a manhole repairs. This is where they, the, we talked about this, the, the swamp gases, mm -hmm. if you will. Kind of eroding the, the metals there. And the uh, and the, the mortar in the bricks. Okay. So we rebuild those. Uh, the other one is, this one was really interesting, water lines for um, Atkinson. And, and this they actually had a picture last night. So... What we're doing on Atkinson is we're actually, we pulled all the asphalt out, going down 18 inches, rebuilding the base. Just, this is a major, major rebuild. It's basically from the ground up, rebuilding the road. It's And so at the point where they had taken the asphalt off and they were taken to sort of remove some dirt, some heavy equipment was driven across or down the, where the, the path of where the street had been. The water lines underneath burst. Wow. I don't mean they were digging holes. I just mean some heavy equipment was on top of it, and that the gave pressure way. just made it pop. So these old, old water lines we're now replacing. This is a project to the tune of about $763,000. But we're in the process of getting it done. We got uh, all that in the works. So we will, we will have it. All right. Um, we did uh, rebid for a Hondo Trail. We're talking about the, the Hondo Trail. That's that little one that goes basically from second over to main, okay. following the Hondo River. That, is that the one that kind of connects the two? Or yeah, okay. kind of, sort of. It, it's um, it's not really used as much as we would like. Uh, we had a, a fence along the Hondo River that kept disappearing. We're not really <laughs> sure where it went. <laughs> We're not replacing the fence anymore. We're done with that. Shame on was it? Yeah. Shame on you. Shame on me. Now. Yeah. This is, this, this is, we're done with that. Um, a couple road projects, and this is where it gets interesting too, because we've talked about all the money that we're spending uh, from the city. This is monies that we got from the state. So 
The numbers we're talking about here are in addition to the 13 million. Okay. So if you look at the total amount of road work that we're doing, it's amazing. Um, East Hobson Road. Now, East Hobson Road, what are we talking about? We're talking about Hobson Road from Earl Cummings Loop to Y.O. Road. It's on the north side where those oil tanks used to be. By the way, those tanks are gone. Um, that stretch of road, is a, that's a city street. Most people don't get that. The okay. perimeter road going around the airport outside the fence, uh -huh. that's a city street. Interesting. Okay. Oh, yeah. We got all that when we got the air center. I got you. Okay. So this is an upgrade going between Earl Cummings heading towards 285. Okay. There is in the works a major rebuild of that 285 Hobson Road intersection. We don't have acceleration lanes or deceleration lanes. We uh, it's It's really a dangerous mess, and it's a major entryway to the air center. Gotcha. This is a 1.3 million just to go about, mm, I think it's a seven tenths of a mile. Gotcha. And and I would also gather, because of course, our our hope is that we're going to see more growth out at the air center. So that it, this, in essence, is going to update those roads to allow that growth to not overwhelm what's currently there, and yep. you know, give us a little bit of grace period before we have to think about upgrading it again. I'm yep. guessing. So um, we also have a. Uh, West McGaffey Rehab. This is going to be a mill and fill going from uh, uh, Union to the West. Uh, that's just under a million. It's 905000 once again, using uh, primarily state money, 95%. These are projects that we, we present to the State Department of Transportation and our team, our very professional engineering team has gotten slammed a little bit lately, um, has presented, and we've been awarded these funding for these projects because we got our guys do a great job. Um, I'm, I'll still I'll kind of go a little bit out of order here, but it kind of ties back in. Okay. We also have uh, go ahead for the uh, bridge project <clears throat> at um, on on Garden where the um, Roswell Livestock is. Mm -hmm. We talked a little bit about this yesterday. That's our next bridge replacement project. Very old, and I got Mr. Nahar promised me we will not start that one until Atkinson is open. Gotcha. The, the plan is to actually go through all the bidding, everything lined up, but actually do the work in the wintertime when there's less rain. Sure. Uh, we got nailed with the rains in the summer on the uh, Lee and Deming Bridge. That uh, kind of set us back a sure. while. But, but anyway, but you're scheduling on. it so one bridge is completely done and accessible to the public before we shut down the other one so it yeah. doesn't force people to really go out of their way around Correct. that area. So. Now, eventually we're going to have we're going to have some more projects on the garden. We've got some sewer line left and we have some water left, but we also are going to ultimately rebuild the the, the street and get that all up to snuff and yeah. uh, we're excited about that. We got some more street project. We were authorization of buying some um, supplies from a asphalt uh, company in Albuquerque. Another just under million dollars. So this was great. This was uh, very impressive. I kind of bounced around a little bit here, but I want to kind of bring all that together because mm -hmm. we sometimes do that, and I wish we we had a more thematic nature of our council meetings. Roswell leases at the Air Center. <clears throat> Two, and then I'm going to jump around and talk about another project. Two big uh, deals here. One, uh, they're both dealing with Ascent Aviation. Ascent Aviation is the new MRO, mm -hmm. Maintenance, Repair, and Overhaul Company, that is that has come to Roswell already. They are leasing a building out there, uh, Building 100. It's not a real big one, but they're using it to store equipment and get some uh, people you know, on board. Gotcha. That set up uh, their shop there for now. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that that lease, and then the lease for some empty space to do some storage inside the the um, secure area. It's a land lease. That's uh, was also approved. Now, uh, I'm a quick aside here, and uh, the vote on this was nine zero with one abstention, and the abstention was Councillor Lopez. And well, why is he abstaining? Councillor Lopez has a family member who is married into the leadership at Ascent. Gotcha. So, so he felt, he came to see me earlier in the day and said, said I'm just going to. I should play and, Switzerland. And you got to have a lot of respect for that. I mean, he, sure. 
he uh, recognized that the potential was there. It's kind of distant. I don't think it was absolutely critical, but he didn't want that to even come into question. It might. You know what? Absolutely. I I agree and understand that sentiment, and uh, I respect that decision. Absolutely. Yeah. So the uh, jumping out of uh, the sequence here to the uh, uh, authorization or ratification, rather, of a uh, contract with Constructors, Inc. to perform demolition what, at the Air Center. So what are we talking about? This is the first step in the actual construction of the large hangar project out there at the Roswell Air Center. This is a $600,000 um, contract. Constructors, Inc. is one of these um, pre-approved contractors. They call it CES. It actually comes out of the Department of Ed, but it's where uh, contractors are vetted. They are, um, their prices are established, and they're confirmed to be reliable. Constructors is actually already on site doing some ramp and taxiway work for the Air Center. So we, wanted to, we needed to get this moving quickly. had to do with some funding issues for the uh, Ascent Aviation. We went ahead with uh, the go-ahead to let them do this work, and it's going to be done very quickly. But this is the first actual moving of dirt in connection with this. Okay. Now, here's here's a couple a point about this. This city has entered into a $1.3 million design contract with Armstrong Consulting, that's our engineering firm. Okay. We've also done another 600000 for additional design work. Uh, this is a $600,000. We are actually, as the city, the entity responsible for building this hangar. Okay. You're going to hear lots of kudos about outside entities that are uh, basically saying, hey, look at us, aren't we great? Mm-hmm. You know, I appreciate the financial help from these other outside entities, mm-hmm. but the reality is... It's the city of Roswell that's doing this project. Gotcha. And the city of Roswell is the one who has signed on these contracts. I'm the one who has signed these. these uh, Taking on the responsibility. Yeah. yeah. And we hope to be reimbursed by these outside entities. But there is no legally binding documents out there. Uh, so when people do the happy dance about, well, how great uh, this project is, mm-hmm. we need to understand who is really doing the project. Gotcha. Kind of like the uh, story of the Little Red Hen. <laughs> so enough on that. Uh, you can probably guess that's kind of an near, issue near and dear to my heart. And also at the Air Center, we had a couple leases with our rental car companies. We uh, charged them, and now we get a, what we're doing is not just a flat rate, but a piece of the action. Okay. Which is what you do at all the Air Centers. Gotcha. Those those two, one for Hertz and one for Avis, those both passed nine to one. Council okay. or Pesa for some reason. Didn't like those. Okay, good deal. So mm-hmm. hopefully, uh, uh, rent cars. Yep, <laughs> hails the city too. <laughs> yep, we uh, we jumped down to uh, uh, our audit. We got an, a presentation on our audit. Uh, it's a clean opinion. We don't have any problem. We have two minor findings that, if it wasn't for the way New Mexico does stuff, wouldn't even be worthy of mentioning gotcha. if this was in Texas. So we have our uh, impressive. Uh, financial team, we do a lot of work. Good deal. Um, and so we're very play- pleased with this. We appreciate the, the hard work that uh, we have to appro- adopt and approve the audit. What are we approving? We're approving the re- corrective actions that's okay. documented for the two very minor findings. Sure. Making sure that, you know, everybody's aware on the same page and, and understand that we got to get those two things rectified. So at this point, we were about 8, 10 in the evening. I thought, oh, hey. We're not doing too bad. We're not <laughs> doing too bad. Let's take a little break, get refreshed. We'll go and we'll, we'll get out of here. <laughs> eh. Not happening. Wrong. Not happening. All right. So... We moved back on uh, another um, housekeeping issue dealing with some very old, uncollectible uh, utility bills. Uh, basically, these are bills that go back 9, 10 right. years, 13 years. Just got to get them off the books, basically. You got to get them off the books. Yeah, so that's we, every business, every small business, same thing. How many times you do collections and after so year or two of no collections, and you're like, all right, we, we probably need to write that one off. Yep. City's got to do the same thing. Yeah, we, you know, in the overall scheme of things, it is a very small portion of what we bring in. So uh, we do we did approve an expenditure <clears throat> for 
for a contract with our air service development consulting service. This was a little bit confusing. What we have is a contract. We had originally uh, done a very small holdover contract, but we needed to um, basically approve one for a whole year. That exceeded the city manager's uh, authority. He okay. Can, he can enter into agreements up to $60,000. But after after that, he's got to get the council involved. Correct. Gotcha. So the total amount for this was 65000 So we had to get a little presentation and and, okay, what are we doing again? <laughs> and uh, Councillor Stubbs, to her credit, we wa- worked through this. It's a motion to do what exactly? <laughs> um, sometimes these things get a little bit in the weeds. Sure. Uh, and we're, I'm still thinking, wow, we're, we're going along pretty darn good. And bam, the wheels came off. Okay. <laughs> and that's when the fun started. We, uh, we actually had two um, uh, important uh, discussions. One was dealing with the service agreement between the city of Roswell and Main Street. And then also in connection with that is a design uh, adoption or an engineering plan adoption for what's called the Great Blocks Project. Okay. What are we talking about? Main Street is a uh, organization formed by downtown merchants mm-hmm. to help promote downtown areas. Now, this is not unique to Roswell. There's something called New Mexico Main yeah. Street. There's actually a national initiative. Yeah. There's restrictions and re- expectations. But many municipalities in the state of New Mexico have a, a Main Street yeah. corridor There's, district or whatever. So uh, we have not had a signed agreement with uh, Main Street Roswell since June when the last agreement expired. There's been some uh, negotiations here. People tend to focus on the UFO Festival, which, candidly, the Main Street had done for a few years, on um, a number of years. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's gone back and forth, whether it's private, whether it's, anyway. It's been a cocktail of all three. Yeah. It's been, yeah, it's been very different uh, rotations of that. The, the, the concern is that um, Main Street is more than just a single festival. And candidly, I, I'm of the opinion we need to change our shift and focus, not just <clears throat> here in Roswell, but in the state. Because one of the challenges with main streets are the structures. Mm-hmm. If the buildings themselves are not usable by businesses, you're not going to have a main sure. street. You have to have the basic first. Um, that means renovating and restoring, in some cases, buildings that are up to 100 years old. Mm-hmm. Well, what does that all mean? Modern standards are expensive. The most compelling is fire suppression, sprinkler systems. Sure, They cost a ton to retrofit. And yet they are critical if you're having food service. If you want to have residential above the first floor, you have to have fire suppression. That's building codes adopted internationally. Mm -hmm. These are not anything specific to Roswell or even to New Mexico. Gotcha. Uh, How do we get the state to help fund these? If we're going to to revitalize our downtowns, we first have to renovate our, our structures so that then businesses can be effective and can work. We have empty buildings on Main Street. That's sad to say, but they are there because the cost to bring them up to code is more than... The juice isn't worth the squeeze for the businesses that are trying to, that want to set up shop there. Yeah, that makes sense. So what I'm hopeful for in going forward is the UFO Festival will be a city public affairs department initiative that will work on making it a quality event Mm -hmm. that is more than just downtown, but around the city. Downtown is very important to this. But also, with a shift to um, our community development guy, Mr. Uh, Kevin Mavers, to work with these downtown merchants and landowners, Mm -hmm. property owners, which is critical. Too many of them are outside the city or even outside the state, mm-hmm. and making sure that we have a, uh, a downtown area that has usable structures. This is, a, this is the beginning of a new a phase, and I'm very hopeful. So we talked about this for a long time. Well, we actually got kind of into the little bit of the, hey, what happened here? Who did that? Sure. Which was unnecessary and counterproductive. Sure. I'm hoping we can clear the air and move forward. But that's kind of what's been dealing with for years with all this stuff is is 
people have kind of built up their their side and their yeah. And there's some animosity and some some hurt feelings there, and we got to work through that to get yep. to the part where we 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 put some real structure and teeth to to what we want this program to be. So w- connected to this is the Great Blocks Project because what is that? That is a revitalization of downtown areas. Kind of what you're talking about. Exactly. Yeah. Now, this is a grant program, so the fun money we're talking about comes from these specialized grants that the state has. And it's earmarked specifically for this project. These kinds of projects, yeah. yes. And this is not money, this is not the city taxpayer money that could be gone to roads or police or fire. This is state money that can only go for these. And we've talked a little bit about this yesterday and before. We have different pots of money that can only be used in certain ways. Mm-hmm. I can't take Lodger's tax money and pay for a new fire truck. Right. That just, we are not allowed to do that by state law. Yep. And a lot of people don't, are, are perplexed by that. Yeah, that's that, that's why budget's a little bit different when you're talking government operations because of that compartmentalization yes. and things like that. It's a little different than your household budget. Budget Now, mind you, I'm, some of the same tactics are used to balance it. Right. You know, you can't rob Peter to pay Paul and all that. No different in city government or, no. or your house or your household finances. But but you're right. I mean, if if I, I, it would be nice, but that's unfortunately – that's how the nefarious stuff happens. If right. you start swinging money left and right, all right, the fire truck fund that was earmarked for that, but we really need it for roads. Fine, we'll move it over here. Which, in some ways, that sounds common sense. But when you got people that that put it this way, it, it, for people that have nefarious interests, that's where they Bingo. use. That's how they 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 pull the wool over our eyes and use that money to funnel out somewhere else. So yeah. to, of, to to close that loophole. They're just very stringent saying, no, if the money's marked for this grant, that's what it better be used for. And if it's not, you're going to answer to somebody. Yep. That's you nailed it. Yeah. So where are we talking about? So on 2nd Street, think of 2nd Street, the railroad tracks just to the west of the railroad tracks is a really big corrugated metal building. That's a hundred and some years old. Roswell Tave Trading Post. You can see the faded lettering on the side Mm -hmm. that's being renovated to become a uh, uh, distillery, oh, craft nice. distillery. Okay. Um, just to the south of that is an is a big empty area that had it is owned by Excel Energy. You had a power plant on it many many years ago. That's all been removed. That area there will remain as Excel Energy property, but they're entering into a long term agreement, and this becomes an open air. Uh, event place in other okay. words where you can have outside concerts yeah. we could have uh food trucks parked we okay. could do community gatherings okay is it planned to have like a pavilion there's going to be a little and... pavilion there and okay. that's going to be that's that's what we're working on okay so we've got that in the works um we got some additional parking on walnut we've got pedestrian friendly walking areas all part of this well like i said we've got the plans now mm-hmm. we're ready to go out and get actual bids on this so that we can actually apply for the grants gotcha we're going to be doing that before the end of this month and it's going to be involving the city main street main street needs to be the applicant for these because it's part of the main street type thing sure it's their Um, it's their program right uh we will actually be doing the grant application gotcha okay our our design team will be working with us they know how to put all this together you've got the grant so, writers in place they yep. can, can do because so we're not going to burden main street with it we've got it covered but we just need them to kind of sign a cover sure. page kind of be the stewards of it i guess you say. now we went a little bit out of out of order because the the, the design team for the great blocks is also the design team for what we're going to do at the cemetery and what we're doing at the cemetery is we're going to build some communal columbariums those are those buildings that you can put ashes in and a, um, a committal shelter, like what, just like what we have at the Veterans Cemetery. Gotcha. It's just basically what we're going to do. A place to do ceremonies. And things. That's right. So we're just going to put that. We're going to do the final design work, and we're going to move forward with this. And there's another one. We're going to use some of that American Rescue Act money that the feds gave us, because once again, that came with restrictions and strings. Sure. But we can use it for this because it people, falls out of vein. people died from COVID. Well, it's well, and it, you know we were kind of laughing about it yesterday, but that that's a logistical problem in yep. some of these uh, pandemic-laden areas of disposal of, of 
bodies, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. so we got that. Now, I know we're running out of time. We did it real quick. We bought some tractors, local vendor. Nice. And uh, we replatted out on the west side where the Crumlin Auto Group is now going to build a new Hyundai on the far west side. Yeah. Where the existing Hyundai is, and an empty field will become the Ford dealership. Yep. Whew. Yep, and then Crumlin will have that whole line will be right. all their dealerships right there in line. So, yep. Good deal. Wow. Uh, of course, uh, if you missed any of the meeting, you can always go back, ralph.nm.gov. Yep. You'll click the, the, the link there, and you can go back and watch that meeting in a couple years' worth if you want to. Yeah, you sure can. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> and, uh, and, of course, uh, and if you have questions and stuff, you know, and you need to contact city councils, you'll find all that information at the website, too, and find mm-hmm. out which one's yours and everything else. And, and Give of me course, a call. And yeah. absolutely. And don't forget, we got election coming up here, too, so make sure you find that information so you know where to vote and how to vote and all that, right. too. Very good. Well, thank you, sir, as always. Whew. Appreciate it. I know you're off to the next meeting, so we'll let you get to, to do that. But I uh, appreciate the update. And sounds like a lot of good stuff got done, oh. uh, even if it did take uh, – uh, a little bit longer than you hoped <laughs> to get it done. So we'll see you next time, and uh, and have a great weekend, okay? Uh.